This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Okay, so we're continuing Fruit of Grisea now. We, uh, last time, we started Michiru's route, and I'm like 99% sure that Michiru has multiple personalities. That seems to be where the game is going. And thus far, we've seen, I believe, two of her personalities. One is her faux sundere dit, uh, dits personality, and then the other one is a much quieter, more serious, and more cold personality. Don't know which one of her those is her true personality, or like her dominant personality. Right now I'm thinking it's actually the, like, quieter and colder one, just because her quiet and cold personality seems to be aware of everything that happens, even when Sundari Michiru is out. Whereas Sundari Michiru is not aware of stuff when her cold personality is out. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's how personality disorders work IRL. It probably... and I'm not even sure if this game actually accurately is depicting personality disorders, or if they're taking creative liberties. But that's where I'm going with this. And last time, uh, after kissing both of her personalities, we're now supposed to go to her room and comfort her. So... The Unending Tunnel. Okay. Well, let's go. Some things are inevitable. The carefully wrapped present you hand to a child never comes back in one piece. There's no night without a dawn. The wrapping paper gets torn to shreds, and the sun rises. That's the way the world works. The girl who wasn't the girl told me to come to her room in the morning. A lot of this about a lot about this strikes me as strange, but at the moment I want to get the situation resolved. Time enough to pick up the details later. Alright, Yuji's room. Although getting up at 5 in the morning is perfectly routine for me, I understand that I'm something of an outlier among my age group in this regard. You're kind of an outlier among a lot of people, I think. Therefore, I decided to take care of my normal morning run and shower off my sweat before paying my visit. Once I'm clean and dressed, I pull out the mental bookmark I'm wedged between, I've wedged between two slices of time, making my way to Michiru's room to pick up the story where I left off. Well, I'm here at least, so that's step one. But how exactly am I supposed to make my entrance? Most likely, the Michiru on the other side of this door has no idea that I'm coming. I pause for a moment, trying to think up a decent opening line. But soon enough, I shake my head and reach out for the doorknob. Thinking isn't going to help right now. Too many unknowns. Whatever happens, happens. Michiru, you awake? I wait patiently for a res response, but as expected, there's no answer. Guess I'll have to make the first move. I'm coming in. If that's a problem, you can tell me why inside. That's not how you go about things. It's unlocked, so my forcible entrance poses no particular difficulties. As I quietly close the door behind me, something stirs slowly in the darkness. For one strange moment, it feels as if the room itself is breathing. Fortunately, there's a bit of sunlight leaking through the gaps in the blinds, so my eyes begin to adjust. It's still gloomy in here, but not enough to pose any real issues. I've spent long enough in darkness where I couldn't tell the difference between having my eyes open and shut. This dimness isn't a problem by comparison. The cloying scent of cheap candy and imported fabric softener hangs in the air, thick as tobacco smoke. Hidden inside the stronger smells, I also pick up a faint hint of ammonia. Probably a major component of the witch's brew the girl slavers on her hair. Oh, it's... <laughs> it's the cat! Kitty Meow! I'm startled by the sudden warmth of a living creature coiling itself around my legs. It's the cat Mitra has been doting on lately. Seems to remember her claiming it wasn't a pet. But if it's hanging around her room, that seems implausible. Hello there, Rommel. Where's Michiru? The cat reacts to my voice by pattering off on its tiny paws and hiding in the bed. Seems he doesn't like me too much. And from a little above where the cat vanished, a somewhat surly human voice addresses me. Oh, she's half asleep, sounds like. Hmm? Is that blanket blob you, Michiru? <laughs> I'm going to open the curtains. I understand it might be easier to relax in the dark, but a little light should help you wake up. Ooh, new CG! I like CGs. Uh-oh. Oh, she looks real sad. But she's cuddling the cat, so that's cute. That's a nice CG. But yeah, she looks very sad right now. Or maybe just 
empty. Aw, that's a cute kitty there. Mitra is sitting on the bed, a blanket draped over her head, her knees clutched to her chest. She's trembling visibly like some traumatized war refugee. Or maybe a child waiting anxiously for parents who should have been home hours ago. Keeping a cat in the dorm, are we? Pretty bold. Can't say I entirely approve, though. Well, that's why we need to close the window before we fall asleep. Hmm. You sound rather forlorn, my friend. Forget to put your on your tsundere attitude this morning? Oh, pff, she literally just said it. Yeah, she says. So this is weird, so this... This is? Okay, I'm a little confused now. This is supposed to be her tsundere personality, but it turns out the tsundere part of her tsundere personality is forced, so this is getting kind of confusing. I grab the back of a nearby chair and pull it up to the bed. After briefly declaring I'm going to sit, I do so without waiting for Michiru's response. Hmm. Now that's more like it. Go on, give me the vinegar. Ooh, get a different pose now. How grand. Well, what's with that whiny tone of voice? You're really off your game. I'll be your audience, so how about starting with your vocal warm-ups? If you'd like, we can restart this scene from the point where I entered the room. He could turn down the snark a bit, but I don't I don't know if he can. I think this is just who he is. I suppose I could if someone told me to. But would that really make you happy? She's a strange one. Hmm, what a reprehensible woman. But if you want my kindness that badly, I suppose I can give it to you. I lean forward in the chair, reach out with one hand, and give Michiru a few pats on the head. Kindness. Not enough for you? Here, take a little extra. That's not necessarily what kindness looks like there, buddy. Well then, that should be enough for the moment. I'm going to get to the topic at hand. No need to prolong this, alright? You can just respond to the questions. Unless I'm completely off base, you're dragging around a serious problem of some sort. I'm not going to pry. But whatever it is, it's creating headaches for me as well. I'm not particularly fond of stumbling cluelessly through difficult situations. To put it simply, I don't like this. I want you to explain your current condition. Can you do that for me? Hmm. Yeah, this is... Main Michiru just having dropped her facade. That's right. So you don't remember after all? Mm. With those words, Michiru lets out a tremendously long sigh. Sounds something like a 10,000-year-old cat accidentally brushing his overlong whiskers against the moon. What a... That's a weird... <laughs> that's a weird simile. Nothing to apologize about. You can take it nice and slow, so try to talk, alright? We got plenty of time. <laughs> Not a problem. Don't sweat the small stuff right now, alright? Anyway, this happens to be exactly where I left my bookmark. Yeah, this is the start of the story, and you're the end. But I need to talk to you if I'm ever going to decipher it. Yeah, he, he's weird. Everyone in this game is weird. Maybe, but in that case, you're the one who has the answer. I'll hear you out, Michiru, so talk to me. Just make sure to wake me up if I doze off from boredom. I've tried sleep learning before, but it never really did much for me. <laughs> he literally, even when he's trying to be nice, he can't not be a jerk. The cat in Michiru's arm suddenly gives a single meow. Taking that as her cue, the girl licks her lips and begins to speak. <laughs> Yeah. 
Hmm. This explains why she is not doing well as a student, because she literally can black out and just not remember anything in class, or if she's done homework or not. Oh, no, no wonder she struggles academically. でも so now I'm a little confused because this this does seem to be the Michiru we've encountered most throughout the game. And so a lot of like her Sundari thing is just a complete act. So it actually seems like her true personality this personality's true personality is very similar to her prime personality. From the looks of it. Ah, this is this is confusing trying to make sense of this. Hmm, so your memory's been skipping. Okay, then let me ask a more precise question. Do you remember what happened yesterday? Oh. Oh. This might get weird if, like, one of her personalities is in love with us, but the other one is not. How would that work? Hmm. Oh. Localized amnesia, is it... Is the girl herself aware that these gaps in her memory coincide with the emergence of another Michiru? No, there shouldn't be a problem. I don't think you need to worry about that. Biting her lower lip, Michiru mumbles a single word. It falls out of her mouth with the dull thunk of a sizable rock hitting the floor. Again? What's that supposed to mean? Hmm. Hmm. Not turning her head, Michiru flicks her eyes over for a fur furtive glimpse at me. After confirming that my expression hasn't changed dramatically, she gives a small sigh and resumes her story. Hmm. I wouldn't worry too much. Your memory's probably just a little confused. At a guess, the situation was overwhelming, so you had to flip a mental switch to deal with it. 
Michiru reacts strongly to those words in particular. Maybe she does know after all? Hmm. Well, I'm not a doctor and you're not a patient. It's up to you to how much you want to hear. I don't think it's that difficult a sentence. Think it over. Michiru lowers her gaze to the floor, staring at the carpet as if she's looking for the word that she dropped earlier. But soon enough, she abandons the search and closes her eyes in apparent resignation. Alright. Immediately after you screamed, the... I guess. I don't really mind. Michiru timidly reaches out to me. Her small hand, damp with sweat, trembles like a sick psalm bird. Immediately after you screamed in the laundry, the, uh... I guess. I don't really mind. Zoom in. Michiru sidles across the bed toward me. As she draws near, the fingers of her hand twine their way between mine. Can I continue now? Immediately after you screamed... Do you want to know the truth or don't you? What now? That's moving pretty fast. But then again, I guess we have already kissed. Hmm? I'm not familiar with that verb. Request clarification. Beep bop, beep bop. I can't determine what you're referring to from the word alone. I'm unable to answer. With how smart you are, you've never heard that word before. Mitru pulls away for a moment, then leans over and wraps her arm around me, keeping her eyes averted the whole way. She's squeezing pretty forcefully, almost like a child clutching a giant stuffed animal for reassurance. Seems a slightly academic question at this point. You already are. I guess I don't really mind. How romantic. It's weird hearing Michiru this quiet. This little scene must look something like a large tree, nearly ready to fall, being supported from the side by a lumberjack. A little ironic, since Michiru is clearly the one who needs to be propped up right about now. Alright, this time I'm going to finish the sentence. Immediately after... That was actually pretty slick of her. What do you mean? Alright, in that case, can you let go of me now? She did all that just so she could hug us. That's That was pretty smooth, Michiru. Even as she speaks, Michiru buries her face against my chest. I can feel the area near her lips grow warm with every exhalation of breath. Well, it's not especially inconvenient for me, so I don't really mind. Nothing to worry yourself about. The girl maintains her embrace on me for quite some time. My thoughts drift back to the enigmatic other Michiru. Hmm? What was that? Hate? Why would I? Where's this coming from? No one in this school is normal. Hmm. It's certainly not what you'd call typical, but honestly, I don't view it as a major problem. Yeah, not sure why anyone would dislike you over something like that. And in the first place, nobody could call me normal either, you know? Even I'm aware of that. That's right, so don't worry about it. I get that a lot. 
To be honest, I'm getting tired of hearing it. I heard that. Hmm. Feel a little guilty to hear you say that. Because I didn't come here on my own initiative. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, Michiru, I came here because you told me to. She seems to be making an effort to hide it now, but Michiru is clearly still disturbed. Confusion and anxiety flash across her face. Seems like this really is the one topic she wants to avoid above all others. But if we keep tiptoeing around it, we're never going to make any real progress. <laughs> oh, see you, kitty. Watching the cat cuddle up against her leg, Michiru slowly continues to speak. That makes sense. It would be weird if it's just like half of the time you're just not aware of stuff that's going on, but the stuff that goes on without you being aware of it still affects you. Yeesh, yeah, that, that, that's understandable. Yeah, it's like being possessed. But at least in this case, the person possessing you is just another person and not a demon. Hmm. <laughs> As Michiru pets the cat's head, it emits a noisy, rumbling purr. Hey, that's what we fought in the earlier! <laughs> and her voice as she speaks those words is slightly brighter than before. How does that one go? There's no night without a dawn and no rain that doesn't end? True enough. But even if the sun does get sick of rising, as long as you're yourself, your world isn't going to get any smaller. Who cares about the rain? Morning and night have nothing to do with it. It's all you. Oh no, obnoxious Mitru is back. Hmm? Well, maybe that means she feels better. Uh huh. Just as I notice her eyes have grown slightly red, Michiru begins snorting roughly through her nose and shouting transparent nonsense at me. The girl really needs to learn how to deal with her emotions a little more calmly. No need to force it. Don't, don't worry, I'm not posting it on Twitter or anything. The stuff we did? By which you mean your unilateral cleaning session. Why does she have to act obnoxious? It's true, we entered a little too forcefully for my liking. Not to repeat myself, but you're the one who... I guess we own her room now. As Michiru stomps off toward the door, a cat follows at a dignified pace, holding its tail straight up in the air. You forgot your broom. How about a radio while you're at it? I hear the delivery service industry is booming! <laughs> Oh, that reference was amazing. That, for those who don't know, that's a reference to Kiki's Delivery Service. Great movie. <laughs> um, maybe. 
The way I see it, blonde or black is beyond the point. What's beautiful is beautiful. Right, for example. For example, the cat. <laughs> yep. You're gonna leave us alone in your room, knowing the type of person that Yuji is. Yeah, got it. I'll be out in a minute. Yeah, man stench is awful. I just said I'll leave. What now? You don't cross somebody who has a demon face. Hmm. Well, looking back on this little visit, I've resolved exactly nothing. I achieved a formal confirmation of Mitra's problem, but little else. The rough equivalent of shifting a heavy load on your back from the right shoulder to the left. That said, I'm not intending to take further proactive measures at this moment. Mitra is the only one who can truly resolve her problems. Maybe external aid could provide her with a temporary crutch, but that'd only make things even harder on the girl when she finds herself alone again. When you try to save someone, often as not, you succeed only in stroking your ego. So rather than scooping them up in your arms, you should be providing a push from behind. Assuming, of course, they even want your help in the first place. Guess I really should get going. Yeah, there's, there's some wisdom to that. You can't really help someone if they don't want help themselves. I leave the sweet-smelling room behind, having gained little there but a fresh coat of cat hair on my socks. <laughs>